Hey everyone, so after disappearing on you all late last year, I'm really excited to be back today. If you follow me on Instagram or have noticed my 19 kilo or 42 pound weight gain in my videos, it's because I gave birth to my first child, Leon. My husband and I are absolutely smitten with him and we love being parents, so I would definitely share with you more about my journey through pregnancy, motherhood and maternity style in a future video. Some of you may or may not know that I'm an architect and I work for myself. So with Leon as my first priority and work as my second priority, that basically means there's no time left for YouTube. Today's video actually took me four months to put together and I really want to thank my amazing subscribers for your incredible patience and support through that very long period. Two years ago, I reviewed my whole handbag collection. Today is a detailed review of my updated, completed and finalized handbag collection, which hopefully you'll see me styling up until I'm a granny. I'm going to share with you 15 handbags from nine luxury labels because you know I love stylistic diversity. And in addition to the four performance criteria I have used in the past, I'm also going to assess as to whether my bags are timeless and unique. I believe that these six factors are what guides the purchasing decisions of every luxury bag collector. So hopefully it will be helpful to you if you're eyeing similar pieces from my wardrobe today. Some of these you would have seen sneak peeks of on my Instagram, but otherwise it will be the first time they feature on my channel today. For the remaining bags, I have already uploaded detailed YouTube reviews, so feel free to check them out after if you would like to have more information. Who do you think will come out on top? Before Leon wakes up, let's get into it. So the first bag I'm going to discuss today is also special because it's my only DIY customized piece. Many of you may remember that mid-2018, the fanny pack trend came back from the dead and I wasn't really interested. That was until I saw the Amez Fall Winter 2019 runway show and fell deeply, deeply in love with their Constance Belt bag. I spent basically all of 2019 searching for that bag in Paris and also at my local Amez store in Sydney. Me, only to be finally told that it was a concept and was not going to be hitting the shelves. That's when I decided to take matters into my own hands. I purchased the Amez Constance Compact Wallet and approached my local leather worker to ask him to add a strap to the back. And voila, perhaps I'm the only one to be styling this runway concept. As much as I adore my Hermes Constance belt bag, I must admit that fanny packs are a fad which will come and go with the seasons. Yet simultaneously, Hermes is a luxury powerhouse which has only produced classics and this belt bag is modeled off their holy grail Constance bag which is immortal in fashion circles. So ultimately, I am betting that this belt bag does stand a chance. The risk I'm taking with the trend is offset and balanced by the universal timeless charm of a mess. While you can never go wrong with classics or holy grail handbags, it is frustrating to spend so much and just end up looking like another fashionista styling a mess. So while many people may be wearing fanny packs or styling the Constance bag or using the Constance compact wallet, I am really excited that I'm the only one styling this wallet as a belt bag. I've heard whispers of the beginning of Amez's quality decline, but I am glad to say that there's definitely no sign of it here. The fine texture of the Epsom leather contrasts beautifully with the smooth and supple leather interior, and both leather types have this wonderful gloss which catches the light. The hardware is sharp and pronounced. I'm only deducting a minor point for the custom strap. Although my leather worker did his best with hand stitching and riveting, naturally it just looks a little bit crude when you view it against the precision of Hermes's craftsmanship. Belt bags are really fun to style because you can wear them around your waist or across your torso or off your shoulder. And even when the fat is over, you can still get use out of this bag by returning it to its original purpose as a compact wallet. Unlike other fanny packs, which are strictly streetwear, I do believe that this bag has the ability to work for smart casual or even cocktail attire thanks to that elite elegance of the Mez and of course the minimal clean aesthetic of the timeless classic, the Constance bag. The slim, lightweight design means that the bag sits against you in this flattering manner, all your valuables are within reach, and it's barely noticeable in terms of size and weight. 
yet simultaneously the fact that it's so narrow means you would struggle to pack anything bulkier than your lipstick and keys so forget about your phone entirely I love how the magnetic closure is really easy to operate one-handed but since it is threaded through a belt if you wear this with jeans it's going to be very fiddly especially when you try to go to the bathroom Amaze is renowned for their quality and also their staggering prices this compact wallet is over four thousand dollars which is nearly double the price of some of my medium-sized handbags plus when you customize a piece you risk voiding the warranty and any future service requests. I should clarify that Hermes would not add the backstrap for me, so I had no choice but to go off on my own. Despite all its unique charm and the fact that it's the perfect belt bag for me, the lower score does reflect the level of risk involved when you customize designer pieces and also the level of risk when you invest in cyclical trends. Just because you collect luxury bags doesn't mean you can't appreciate affordable labels. A well-designed, reliable and easy to use bag isn't reserved only to those which are four digit price tags. I have so much love for my Furla candy. As a tri-color PVC bag, it's fun and eye-catching. Yet with a silhouette similar to the LV Speedy, the candy balances its loud personality with classic form to elevate itself above kitchen design. PVC bags are not new to luxury brands, Hermes, Chanel, Devo, to name a few, have explored them in recent years. However, there has yet to be a PVC bag which outlives the season in which it launches. History has shown that while PVC is a fascinating material thanks to its inherent transparency, the statement aesthetic can quickly tire as copies are made with inferior plastics which cheapen the style as a gimmick. PVC bags are incredibly eye-catching. There's something about the way it catches the light and how a semi-transparent bag invites you to peer into someone's personal belongings, almost like a peeping tom. Combine this with the uniquely harmonious tri-color palette and you have a bold and unconventional bag that's packed with personality and highly memorable. A three-digit bag among four and five-digit bags means that it's not going to receive any special treatment. So the fact that my Furla candy is six years on still looks like new is testament to the quality of Furla PVC and craftsmanship. I do believe there may be a slight error with design detailing as the PVC at the end of the zipper has cracked. Black orange coffee is surprisingly harmonious and works wonders especially with your neutral basics. The glossy black PVC is somewhat reminiscent of patent leather and the bicolor body helps to reduce the visual scale of the bag. This is a playful, unusual bag which demands attention in casual and smart casual events but can appear too comical for dressier occasions. This is my go-to bag if there's any chance of rain and I love how it's the most cheerful pick-me-up in terrible weather. Although at times it can feel more like a playful prop rather than your reliable handbag. And PVC structurally cannot handle much weight so to avoid this bag sagging painfully you'll likely find yourself packing light which doesn't utilize the generous volume of the bag. I am glad that my bag is only partially transparent so my belongings can remain discreet which doesn't compromise your safety and security. My mantra is to never pay full price so I scored this bag for about 40% off. Even if I did pay full retail value, I do believe this bag is worth every dollar. It has never failed to protect my belongings even in torrential rain and always adds that playful pop of colour and happiness to any outfit. When it comes to quality and personality, affordable bags can offer great value for your dollar. Just note the less refined detailing and an aesthetic which follows more seasonal trends. As early as 2014, the luggage trunk as handbag trend emerged and I was smitten with the shrunken, adorably miniature proportions with the romantic connotations of world travel and heritage as most luxury labels have their roots in trunk making. This Gucci X Globetrotter GG Beauty case is the only piece in my collection which is a limited edition collaboration between two labels, fusing together Italian luxury fashion with British luxury travel and as the ultimate cherry on top, it features a statement bamboo handle which is unmistakably Gucci. 
While the beige Gigi canvas is eternally classic and the bamboo handle as elegant today as when it was first introduced in 1947, I must admit the luggage trunk aesthetic is somewhat gimmicky and can wane with the seasons. Fortunately, the British label Globetrotter is a leading luggage designer and therefore this is a real operational mini luggage trunk and not a superficial aesthetic. That gives the Gigi Beauty case an authentic charm. Limited edition collaborations are a fun way for you to sample two brands at once and they also serve as a unique time slot in fashion history. I love how through my Gigi Beauty case I can experience the very best of Gucci without falling for a mainstream trend. With its joint Italian and British roots you can really enjoy the best of both worlds. The canvas is scratch and water resistant, all corners are reinforced and the rigid trunk structure makes this bag near indestructible. The boxy structure and heavy duty nature of this trunk imbue it with a certain masculine edge which combined with the neutral palette and detachable shoulder strap makes it most suitable for daytime styling. Handheld, it can work for smart casual thanks to the gleaming hardware and the indulgent bamboo feature. Inherently quirky, I must admit it is at odds with evening attire which generally require more conservative and feminine pieces. Sadly, the Gigi Beauty case is not perfect and this is where it shows. The rigid structure is heavy, packing is inflexible, so expect to feel like you're playing Tetris. The adjustable strap is still too long. And the bag has a tendency to flip sideways when it's lightly packed. And the bamboo handle has an annoying tendency to make rattling sounds. You really are getting two brands for the value of one, not only in the immaculate design and detailing, but also in the price point. Considering it's limited edition and produced in limited numbers, it's a steal. Strangely though, it launched under the radar and continues to fly under the radar today, so there is the risk that it will appeal only to niche collectors which will stunt its investment value. A fascinating hybrid of Italian high fashion with British luggage which offers a quirky twist on classic luxury. Just beware the monetary and stylistic risk as collaborations don't always stand the test of time. For those of you who watched my previous bag collection video, you may remember me mentioning that a metallic leather Bulgari bag was on my wish list, and I'm so excited that it is now part of my collection. As a fan of gold jewelry, it feels like the cherry on top to be able to complete my outfit with this stunning gold bag. And I love how the slender silhouette makes the bag feel equal parts clutch and equal parts wallet on chain when you use the detachable strap. With its bejeweled snake motif and clean, minimal leather detailing, Bulgari has all the right ingredients for universal and iconic bag design. However, although Bulgari has been designing fine jewelry for over a hundred years, it is a relatively new and small player in leather goods. With a limited market presence and small fan base, Bulgari currently lacks two key ingredients needed to launch their Serpenti Forever series into the eternal hall of bag fame. The plus side of falling in love with a stunning bag which flies under the radar is that you're rewarded with a look that's uniquely yours. I am so glad that I picked up my gold bag last year because it is no longer available. This is one of a kind. The great part about fine jewelry masters expanding their offering to leather work is that they tend to translate the same expertise in detailing and hand finishing. The quality of materials and craftsmanship here is on par with what I see from elite leather artisans like Amez. And as you would expect from a metal worker, Bulgari has especially beautiful statement hardware. When you picture an all gold bag, it can easily appear excessively yellow and overall tacky. Fortunately here, Bulgari has opted for what they call an antique bronze, which is desaturated in tone and appears as a lighter, softer silver under changing light. Whether you wear gold or silver jewellery, this dynamic metallic leather can complement both shades and the absence of a print ensures there's no competition with even your busiest outfits. I love how it can transition seamlessly from clutch to wallet on chain for elegant styling options, although I do believe it's better reserved for evening or smart casual events as the eye-catching feature can be a bit over the top for ordinary situations. 
While I love the sleek proportions and the luxurious double leather lining, you would struggle to fit any more than your wallet, keys and phone. This is why it would also not be your bag of choice for ordinary errands as you just can't carry anything useful. It comes with a beautiful matching compact mirror which I typically leave at home simply because I so desperately need that extra little bit of space which it frees up. While the Serpenti Forever is always my wow factor bag, beautifully crafted and so easy to style, I must admit it is not worth the staggering retail price, especially since limited market demand means you'll probably face low resale value. Sure, it's a statement guaranteed to turn heads, but not quite worth the daily inconvenience of having no flexibility in packing and also inflexibility in selling on. Some of you may remember from my previous bag collection video that Bottega Vanada was another wishlist item, but I was undecided as to what bag model since their designs are typically soft and slouchy while I'm a huge fan of structured bags. Then came 2017 and the Olympia Not Clutch bag was the answer to my prayers. This bag is logo free yet it signals luxury so clearly. There's an array of indulgent contrasting textures from the quintessential woven leather which is of course the BV signature through to the rustic knot hardware and the sumptuous suede interior. This buttery bag is not one to be seen but felt and held in your hand. With its loyal fan base, it's easy to forget that Bottega Vanada is still a relatively young player in the luxury leather goods market. The Olympia Knot Clutch combines two icons within the fashion house, the woven leather signature with the equally enduring knot hardware. While these timeless aesthetics and the neutral color tone would suggest a classic, the Olympia Knot Clutch receives relatively low consumer interest, so I don't believe it would currently qualify as a lasting investment piece. There's a real sense of individual ownership and design elegance when you style a handbag that everyone can tell is luxurious without the need for a loud logo. That's the beauty of wearing BV and making it your own. The low visibility of the Olympia Knot Clutch is likely due to its steep retail price, although that does carry the advantage of exclusivity. I'm impressed by how far-reaching Bottega Vanita's legacy appears to be, their reputation for artisanal leather expertise, which many have raved about. I'm a new customer and I'm glad to say I'm not disappointed. Together with Chanel Lambskin, this is the most beautiful leather I have ever felt against my skin. The hardware also presents wonderful contrast in age and texture, so that together the Olympia Knot Clutch appears to balance old and new, not only in design philosophy, but also mastery of materials. To be honest, even though this is my dream bag model, when it comes to colour, I would have ideally liked gold leather with glossy black trim, as that sharp contrast would enhance this boxy silhouette. I ended up choosing grey because it was on sale. In theory, grey as a neutral tone works from day to night, casual to formal, with a natural elegance, and since it appears more muted, it won't compete with your bold colours or your bold prints. The rustic hardware has a lot of complexity in hue, but it's not directly compatible with silver or gold jewellery, so I do find to avoid that awkward mismatch, I tend to wear this bag largely with no bling, which means it's more of a daytime bag for casual or smart casual events. I'm a big fan of the transforming clutch slash wallet on chain aesthetic, since it presents styling flexibility and it's also visually flattering. Fortunately here, with my Olympia not clutch, it has greater carrying capacity, so I don't have any issue bringing with me the matching pocket mirror. I personally am a big fan of a shorter chain strap, so the bag remains close to me, protected under my arm and yet it's not too snug for me to wear a crossbody. While it feels liberating to style a bag for its beautiful craftsmanship instead of its loud logo, Bottega Vanada as a young label is still working out its foundations. Perhaps with time, the Olympia Knot Clutch will earn its status as a classic in their portfolio, but for now, the low market exposure and unorthodox hardware don't exactly justify the steep retail price. Overall, a luxuriously crafted piece you will enjoy as long as you did not pay full retail price and ideally worn without additional jewelry. If I were to describe my taste in handbags, I would say it's classic luxury with a bold modern twist. And that complex balance between tradition and innovation, fun and formality is what I love about my Gucci Blooms Dionysus. 
Through the pop of colour and printed florals, the Gigi canvas takes on a new fresh and youthful persona. Styling this bag injects a sense of spring, summer and sunshine all year round. Who wouldn't want that? Considering the Gucci Dionysus launched as recently as 2015, it is too early to tell whether it would earn the status of a forever handbag. Note, however, that it does follow the classic flat bag formula for success. There's a feature hardware, structured silhouette, luxurious materials, and two-way chain strap. Gucci have done an amazing job fusing past and present seamlessly in this bag design. There's the symbolic storytelling of Dionysus the Greek god from their fashion archives paired together with the G canvas which has been the house signature since the 1960s. I love how the antique rose suede and the florals inject new life into a historic print but I do understand that this bold and bright detailing may not appeal to everyone so from that perspective it's probably not as timeless as the conservatively neutral Dionysus. The Dionysus, as one of the more expensive handbags on offer, is not as overexposed as some other Gucci accessories which you likely would have seen everybody wearing. The Gucci Dionysus has earned a place in the permanent collection, yet with the introduction of new seasonal twists every year, it does emphasize the blooms as an individual unique choice. I purchased my Gucci Blooms Dionysus in 2017 from the flagship in Florence, Italy, and is true testament to Italian craftsmanship being on par with their French rivals. This bag is as beautiful and intricate to hold as it is a feast for your eyes, from the sumptuous suede to the durable textured canvas through to the ironwork detailing. This bag holds its structure well, resists wear, and after all these years looks like new. A bag with this much flair can transform any simple outfit from zero to hero in an instant. I love the styling ease of grab and go where neutral clothing is a perfect backdrop for this busy statement. Silver hardware spans the full spectrum of your wardrobe. However, I do believe the florals carry a seasonal or garden party connotation which can put it at odds with evening attire and autumn winter styling, alongside clothing that is too bright or too busy which can compete with this bag. The mid-range price takes some mental weight off your shoulders, the canvas is practical and durable, however the Dionysus is a heavy bag and the luxurious suede does have extra care requirements which offset the low maintenance canvas. In an age where biannual price hikes render most classic handbags unaffordable, the Gucci Dionysus Blooms is a refreshing package of quality Italian craftsmanship and iconic design with a fun youthful twist all at a reasonable price tag for reliable quality. The Gucci community is large with strong resale interest, so you can win as both a buyer and a seller, assuming that you hold this piece for a couple of years in like new condition as it gradually grows value. An all-rounded average performer, which is not overpriced and worth every dollar in design and detailing. Only time will tell, but I do hope it earns immortality as Gucci's classic. Whether you're a fan or a critic, you have to admit the Birkin is quite a phenomenon for the extent of its infamous reputation and the frenzy it incites. As a collector, you can't help but feel like you've ticked a box by owning one of these history-defining pieces, especially since mine came from the French motherland and the iconic Paris flagship store. Thanks to rampant social media, superfakes, and pervasive celebrities or pop culture, the elusive and mysterious Birkin is now becoming close to mainstream knowledge. Once a symbol of elite French luxury, it is unfortunately transforming into a symbol of tasteless excess thanks to questionable personalities. While its reputation divides, it also conquers. Since 1984, the Birkin has been immune to shifting fashion trends and time and time again, demand for this bag far outnumbers available stock. In addition to the challenges mentioned earlier, Hermes is also increasing production to capitalize upon the booming Asian market. So the claim that Birkins are rare or low in stock may increasingly be lip service. Therefore, it's no longer surprising to see Birkin styled across Instagram and among celebrities or even in the streets as certain cities are rampant with counterfeits. Quality control has long plagued other luxury brands, but I'm glad to say there's no signs of it here in my 2017 Birkin from the Paris flagship for Bossant Honore. The leather is plush, it animates under light, the 24 karat gold hardware is as shiny today as when I first walked out of the boutique, and the saddle stitching is a masterpiece to be admired.
While black leather and gold hardware is that killer combo that works with every outfit and every occasion, a Birkin 35 is quite generously sized and can dwarf your figure if you're not tall. Visually, it appears more like a day tote rather than your feminine evening bag, especially considering how the straightforward access is casual in nature. Personally, I adore the mini Birkin 25 and believe the Birkin 30 would be more suitable for my height. I should also mention that I still need to lose another five kilos to get back to my pre-pregnancy size. So I would be granting a full score if I had received this bag in my preferred sizes. While the tote structure means that this bag is easy to get in and out of on the go, the luxurious double leather lining paired with the spacious size means that it's not exactly light. Ideally you would use this bag for short trips or you would pack light, which is frustrating as minimal packing contradicts the generous capacity of this bag. While difficult to afford and puzzling to attain, the Birkin is one of few handbags which can resell for double its original recommended retail price, especially when it comes to neutral classics like the black and gold I have here. It will take a while for you to secure a buyer with that type of cash flow, but if you can afford the weight, then the Birkin is a valuable investment piece, guaranteed to consistently rise in value as they mimic Amez's annual retail price increases. If you don't mind the heated debate that comes with the spotlight, the Birkin is an immortal aesthetic which is surprisingly user friendly especially if you score one in proportion with your frame. This vintage piece captivated me the moment I first lay eyes on it. I love the bold rejection of Chanel's iconic diamond lattice for instead these vertical quilts, the in-your-face logo bling and the chunky chains, both of which are signatures of the 1990s. It's unapologetically loud and incredibly indulgent to style. The magic of Chanel is that they created this universal flat bag language where despite the size or material or seasonal offshoot, it's the classic style of the bag which ensures its place as part of a timeless legacy. No one can deny the irresistible allure of Chanel, but also no one wants to look like a copy of every other fashionista. This rare piece from the 1990s grants me a proud place in the Chanel family without forcing me to mimic mainstream style. Thanks to the chunkier chains and somewhat masculine vertical quilting, this gorgeous flap boldly announces its individuality in breaking from the group. Thanks to the illustrious quality of vintage Chanel, this flap is nearly 30 years old but still has that undeniable wow factor. The only sign of its age is that one of these circular links has grown loose and has a tendency to detach from the leather where I have to manually screw it back in. I do believe this should be easy to fix which I will address in a future video when I send it in for repairs. In theory, black and gold work across the full style spectrum, but here with the excess bling and the stately size of the bag, there's a certain formality which can make it overkill for casual events. The glamorous aesthetic would be perfect for evenings if only this bag was smaller, as I believe the prominent visual scale of this bag can dwarf your elegant attire. This bag is spacious, but likely you'll never carry it full, as when this bag is empty, it's already a serious weight thanks to the double leather lining and the solid brass chunky straps. This bag features the iconic two-way shoulder strap, but likely you'll rarely wear it as a single chain because it's ridiculously long. Although I have mentioned in my previous Chanel size and fit video that you can hack the length and make it much more easier to wear. As a larger bag, it's impossible for you to fully shield it from accidental damage, so I am glad that I have here scratch resistant caviar leather which offers the bag a certain level of protection and that gives me peace of mind. With the recent revival of oversized branding in logo mania trends, this bold flap is likely only a few cycles away from returning to the spotlight. However, even now in what I consider to be a neutral market, this bag is retailing for close to which is impressive considering it was valued at 4500 in 2014 and I bargained my way down to 2500 for this bag. Unfortunately, some bags are not equal parts practicality as they are equal parts beauty, but even when your head knows this, your heart wants what it wants. 
For those of you with a keen eye, you may notice that there's something different about my Chanel Classic Double Flat. Thanks to the annual price increases, I was able to sell my previous flat for a profit and I replaced it with this vintage piece from the 1990s. Mint condition vintage Chanel from Japan is often competitively priced, so I was able to use the price difference to afford another handbag in my collection. The switch to vintage was also a really nice way to own this holy handbag with some nuance of individuality as I was becoming a bit frustrated that this bag would be seen on everyone. The Chanel classic double flap in black lambskin with gold hardware and size medium will likely hold forever the status of the most universally desired handbag. Naturally, a black and gold handbag is a killer combination, especially when paired with the luxurious feel of buttery lambskin leather and the elitism of a French fashion powerhouse. Very few bags can look as fabulous on your great-grandmother through to your great-granddaughter. While the Chanel Classic Double Flap does boast this immortality, it also presents you with the dilemma that you've paid an expensive price just to look like a carbon copy of everyone else. Especially in today's social media age, where dupes and counterfeits are not only mainstream and incredibly convincing, but also increasingly acceptable. Buying Chanel today is known to be a sort of hit or miss experience in terms of quality control. I'm glad to say that purchase seeing mint condition vintage not only avoids that situation but also presents you with some additional advantages such as the aged lambskin having that extra glossy patina which has developed over time. The 24 karat gold plated hardware is also incredibly shiny with minimal tarnishing and all the seams are holding up well. When it comes to an elegant black bag which can accompany any outfit, look no further than the Chanel Classic Flat in size medium. This is that perfect size which can appear effortlessly glam during the day and incredibly chic at night. For maximum versatility, choose the more subdued silver hardware as gold can appear a bit flashy when it comes to casual or daytime events. Although as my viewers know, I absolutely love gold highlights, especially here when it's offered in that deeply rich 20 for carat gold plating. The two-way chain strap offers maximum styling flexibility as you can take on different personas. I find that when this bag is worn off the shoulder on the longer strap, it has a more youthful, casual touch, while when it's worn on the shorter chain, it appears more traditional and ladylike. This double flap is next in line when it comes to limited carrying capacity, which is surprising given that it has a reasonable visual size. Like Bottega Vanita leather, the supple lambskin lining is an absolute pleasure for your fingertips, but it is unfortunately ill-suited for resisting accidental dents and scratches from your bag contents or even your chain strap. Lambskin requires conscious care to look fantastic, so that means when you bring this bag out, you're always going to have to dedicate a little part of your brain to being concerned about the welfare of your delicate bag, and that can be exhausting. With the biannual price hikes and an ever-growing community of die-hard Chanel fans, there are a few investments like the classic double flap which can enjoy guaranteed growth. If it's not your forever bag, that's okay. There's an eager resale market and opportunities for profit. As a timeless universal icon, this flat bag functions a little bit like a magical clothing hack. It can instantly polish any outfit and instantly elevate any occasion. You gotta admit it sure is handy having a bag which can make you look so fabulous with so little effort. Holy Grail handbags are enchanting, but beware the mainstream aesthetic, limited carrying capacity and extra care required. All acceptable fine print for a well-priced vintage piece, but perhaps worth a second thought for those of you paying those staggering retail prices. I find that the more you know about a fashion label's history and design philosophy, the more you enjoy their creations. That's definitely the case with Devo, the Belgian luxury label, which is the oldest leather worker in their world, and their iconic masterpiece, Le Brion. This beautiful handbag is handcrafted from the finest materials and artisanal skill, not to mention it's gracefully understated. While labels like Hermes oversaturate popular culture, social media and celebrities, Devo maintains elegance and exclusivity through discretion, which you can't help but respect. Another structured bag styled by royalty, you can very much consider the Briand as Belgium's answer to Francis Hermes Kelly. Minor changes have been made to the design in recent years, such as an optional shoulder strap and feature Snapping, both of which are not visible here on my vintage bag. Alongside its rich heritage, the quality craftsmanship and timeless neutral colour give this bag a certain immortality so that it rises above shifting fashion trends. 
Some handbags signal luxury through their logos, while others signal luxury through the quality construction and beauty of classic design. I love that my vintage Devo turns heads and leaves everybody wondering what is this mysterious label. Although established in Europe and Asia, it was only last year that Devo opened their first American store, and coupled with their steep retail price, it shapes limited access which in turn results in exclusivity. Devo is one of the few labels today which continues the proud tradition of handcrafting, which results in a beautifully detailed and reliable bag. Even in this vintage piece, it holds its structure well, the box cuff leather is glossy, the shiny hardware has no signs of tarnishing, and there isn't a single stitch out of place. While the petite size and clean lines of the structured silhouette make this bag suitable for all occasions, I must admit the deep brown tone isn't formal enough for evenings, so my vintage Briand is better suited for daytime attire. The top handle and the soft curves throughout the design give this bag a traditionally feminine feel, which can be at odds with anything too casual or too street, but that gives you plenty to work with. Despite the ageless glamour of the Briand, its origin as a 1950s bag does begin to show in the belted clasp closure, which is unfortunately cumbersome to operate, especially since the hardware is extremely heavy. This wouldn't be such an issue with the slower lifestyle of the 50s, but for today's modern women, we need quick, easy access to our belongings on the go. In the same way, the optional shoulder strap would have been an amazing feature because hands-free is in such high demand, but unfortunately it's not available here in my vintage bag since it was only introduced in the last couple of years. Devo is often considered parallel to Hermes as it shares the same artisanal expertise and exclusivity. Although unlike Hermes, Devo does not play any games, so as long as you can afford the steep retail price, the Briant is yours. However, while Hermes enjoys mainstream attention and demand far exceeds available stock, Devo appeals to more of a niche market and with the lower demand comes lower resale value. Therefore, as beautiful as this bag is with exceptional quality and proud heritage, I don't believe the Briand is worth its steep price unless you score one discounted like I did with my vintage piece. Elegant, exclusive and discreet, the Briant has its imperfections but will always be respected as a timeless icon from a world past. Despite all my earlier disclaimers, if you still find yourself lusting after that classic flat bag aesthetic, then making the switch from leather to tweed can be a fantastic solution. Tweed is that oh so Chanel signature with a discount, and it's naturally one of a kind, thanks to the countless seasonal variations in colour and material. My blue tweed flat bag alongside silver hardware, which is another Chanel staple, I feel that this unique piece neatly rounds off what was otherwise missing from my all black, all leather, all gold Chanel collection. Long before the iconic quilted leather invention of 1955, tweed was the revolutionary fabric which launched Chanel as a fashion house back in the 1920s. While less commercially popular than their leather counterparts, tweed is indispensable to Chanel DNA. This bag seamlessly merges together the dynamic 1920s texture with 1950s flat bag silhouette and that 1980s signature interlocking CC hardware to result in a bag that is eternally relevant. For those of you who've watched my detailed review of my tweed flat bag, you may remember me mentioning that tweed can incorporate all sorts of wacky materials and the unlimited threads results in unlimited combinations. This means that your chosen tweed acts like your own fingerprint, a one in a million persona which is uniquely you. A tweed flat bag allows you to enjoy all the signatures of the universal Chanel language without compromising your individual expression, and to me that's the perfect balance. Perhaps this doesn't apply to all tweed bags, but mine consists of two linings directly stuck upon each other without additional support structure. While this does result in a bag that is incredibly light and has maximum storage capacity, to me it does feel like a rush job with cuts in budget and construction time. It's also worth noting that tweed as a fabric is not as hard wearing as leather, and the expressed weaves, while they do create luxurious texture and a dynamic sense of depth, it can be problematic as it increases the chance of accidental snag and pull. The Chanel label is built upon the legacy of its iconic two-piece tweed suit, but if you're like me, you'll be scared of the care requirements, the expensive price tag, and the challenges associated with reinventing clothing. 
This tweed flat bag can offer you an economic and versatile alternative, especially if you choose silver hardware, which is easy on the eyes and easily transitions from day to night, casual to formal. Luxurious fabrics tend to reference one another, so I love to style this bag with my fancy lace dresses. Not everything works with blue, but here it has connotations of denim, so it also frees up casual styling possibilities. And this bag is incredibly light with spacious carrying capacity thanks to the lightweight nature of the fabric and the lack of the internal support structure. Comfort on the go is enhanced by Chanel's signature two-way shoulder strap, which can take you from morning to evening by transferring from your shoulder to crossbody to that extra bit of elegance when worn short on the double chain. However, as fabric is fragile, this is a bag which will demand your conscious attention during usage and that can be tiring. While tweed can be considered one of the core cornerstones of the Chanel label, it has received marginal consumer interest in mainstream circles, which challenges its investment value. While you can choose tweed in those universal neutral or soft pastel tones, the fabric inherently lends itself to bright colours or loud prints, which can be challenging to style for a generally conservative market. Since tweed is available in limitless combinations, your selection is always a very personal decision which may not appeal to the next buyer. Tweed is priced lower than their leather counterpart, however, you're still paying for the annual flat bag inflation. The perfect solution if you have a bold sense of style and want to redefine a Chanel legacy as your own. Just beware that breaking away from the mainstream market does come at a price penalty. More than a decade ago, a new type of canvas tote was appearing on the scene and everybody was wondering about this mysterious label. It's incredible to think that the Goyard St. Louis is now a major contender to the iconic favourite Louis Vuitton Neverfull and Goyard achieved all of this simply through the power of word of mouth. Intrigued by the tales of Goyard's quality craftsmanship and exclusivity through secrecy, I knew I had to add this label to my collection, and it was perfect when I discovered their equivalent of the Hermes Kelly top handle, the Goyard Saigon. Goyard's irresistible allure is very much interwoven with their proud history. Older than Louis Vuitton with elite clientele such as Coco Chanel, Goyard was considered the epitome of luxury trunk design. The Saigon is their 2002 revival of a 1950s special order which is now part of their permanent collection. Although Goyard's brand discretion has resulted in marginal market interest which may undermine Saigon's universal appeal. Goyard is the only luxury label which completely rejects advertising, social media, celebrities, e-commerce and mass production. This means that you can only own their bags if you physically visit one of their stores, which is rare in some parts of the world like America and non-existent in other parts of the world like Australia, where I am. Goyard's intention is not market takeover, but rather adhering to old world exclusivity and elite customization. So their intention is not to make it easy for everyone to buy their bags. As frustrating as that can be, you gotta respect a label which adheres to its reputation rather than reaching for every opportunity to make more profit. Compared to the St. Louis, which is entry level, the Saigon is priced at a premium, which further ensures its exclusivity and your individuality. Although Goyard saves handcrafting for their customized pieces, Saigon as an off-the-shelf design is still expertly detailed in manufacturing. The iconic Goyardin canvas looks and feels like luxurious leather, even though it's fabric, and the printed colors give three-dimensional texture. Like Gucci's mastery of bamboo, the Goyard family's history in transporting logs enable them to handle beech wood with finesse, as you can see from the beautiful wooden features. The finishing of the materials, the precision of the saddle stitching and the stamping are all nothing short of perfect. With its ladylike top handle structure and the feminine elegance of the petite PM size, the Saigon very much carries all the glamorous connotations of the legendary Hermes Kelly and can easily transition from day to night. Grey as a timeless neutral works across the full spectrum of your wardrobe, although I do find that the light tone of the beech wood is quite surprising and it can challenge the accepted notions for formal evening attire. Finally, the Goyardin canvas, although iconic, is quite busy, so it can compete if you're wearing other dynamic prints or textures in your outfit. By substituting leather with canvas in part, the Saigon is not only lighter but also scratch resistant and waterproof, which is exactly the type of inbuilt protection you want on your very expensive handbags. 
The bag is one of few on the market where the closure is entirely hardware free. I love the genius concept of overlapping and interlocking leather, but in terms of long term maintenance, I am concerned that this leather tongue might be prone to accidental scratches or markings as you sort of have to wipe your hand over it to grip on. Otherwise it's really easy to use one-handed. As a second hand bag it did not come with the optional shoulder strap which is a add-on feature when you purchase it. So that's a bit of a pity because you gotta love a hands-free option. Unlike other labels which continuously release seasonal variations and new products, Goyard stands by their permanent collection to emphasize their bags as heirlooms, not disposable fashion. In theory, limited production and quality craftsmanship should grow investment value. However, Goyard's popularity among the elite and absence from the mainstream means that demand is largely skewed towards their special orders and boutique pieces, not the secondhand market. As Goyard's presence grows internationally, especially in the vast American market, the trend likely will shift. But for now, it doesn't justify the steep retail price of the Saigon. Genuine exclusivity goes hand in hand with mystery. The Saigon earns you insider status, but at the cost of the world having no clue what brand or what bag you're styling, alongside inflexibility in you selling this on. I knew I had set a challenge for myself when I decided to add only one Louis Vuitton bag to my handbag collection, which is kind of crazy when you consider how many new bags LV launches every season. After much deliberation, I decided on this gorgeous Alma BB. I loved how the miniature size seemed to inject new life into an otherwise traditional silhouette. So this bag seems to have two personas. It's equal parts historic and equal parts playful. While the Alma design is nearly a hundred years old and was custom designed for the one and only Coco Chanel, the BB only launched about 10 years ago and has quickly established itself as one of the most successful bag models in Louis Vuitton history. As the perfect union of old and new, not to mention a more affordable price tag in line with its compact size, I'm pretty certain that this bag will always remain a hot favourite. Every bag collector wants to make solid investment decisions, which naturally means we flock towards the classics and inevitably look like clones of one another. I have seen this bag styled by teens, soccer moms, grannies, and everybody in between. In my three years of ownership, the Alma BB has met and exceeded all of my expectations. It's extremely durable and hard wearing to the extent that it's my luxury bag of choice when I travel. I'm a serial bag babier, so I freak out when my bag is thumped around during airport security or I have to put it on the floor during takeoff. My Alma BB can take all of that and look completely like new. I'm only deducting a minor point because the materials while reliable don't exactly feel luxurious. For example, I've always found Louis Vuitton leather to feel quite plastic. Some bags are a pleasure just to use and the Alma BB definitely falls under that category. It's sturdy, easy to clean, extremely lightweight, packs much more than what you expect and also gives you carrying flexibility thanks to this optional shoulder strap. It's only shy of perfection because I would love if this were adjustable, otherwise the current length is perfect for crossbody but a bit long when you wear it off your shoulder. With its petite size classic silhouette and optional shoulder strap, the Alma BB is one of those magical bags which can transition from day to night, casual to formal. There's an effortless elegance about the bag, probably thanks to the understated glamour of that iconic Damier Iban canvas, not to mention that the deep chocolate tone of the leather is a perfect match for neutral basics. However, this bag can clash with pops of colour and also other busy prints in your outfit. Compared to other elite luxury labels and their holy grail handbags, the Alma BB comes in at a significantly lower price tag without compromising quality, styling flexibility or investment value. For example, I purchased my Alma BB tax-free for under $1,200 in 2017. Now, three years later, it's retailing for $2,000. The must-have bag if you generally travel light, prefer a bag that's more practical than luxurious, and enjoy a playful twist on a timeless neutral aesthetic. Just make sure you don't mind seeing it on others as well. There are some bags which hypnotize you the moment you first lay eyes on them and for me my first love was and always will be the Hermes Kelly. 
as an architect I cannot resist a structured bag especially here in that sharp cellier style with stiff Epsom leather the silhouette is impeccably tailored with clean minimal lines I've told myself no more bags but if I ever break that rule it will be for more Kelly's when it comes to luxury brands seeking celebrity ambassadors no one has mastered it more than Hermes thanks to their endorsement by Grace Kelly Hollywood actress and Princess of Monaco the Kelly bag became an international icon for elegance and feminine glamour. Like how Chanel is the archetype for flat bags, the Kelly immortalized the top handle bag form and can be considered the original inspiration for many variations you see today. While the Birkin has long been synonymous with gaudy celebrity culture, the Kelly has largely been able to keep out of the spotlight which helped to maintain its mysterious and graceful allure. Unfortunately, a lot of that has changed in recent years thanks to social media, super fakes, mass production and the launch of Mini Kelly 2s in 2016 which unfortunately attracted infamous personalities like the Kardashians. While the legendary exclusivity of the Kelly is diminishing, the quality of France's long-standing artisanal craft still stands. No one can produce colours more beautiful than Hermes, and few can match their finishing in leather and the precision of their hand stitching. Especially here in the combination of the pronounced cellier silhouette with the rigid Epsom leather, my Kelly a year on still looks like it's brand new. With its celebrated reputation and five digit value, the Kelly would never look out of place in formal and fancy situations. However, what I love about this bag is that the clean, minimal architectural form makes it an equally beautiful companion for your most underrated outfits. Sure, the sharp cellier style is overkill for your morning coffee run, but that doesn't mean it doesn't look fabulous when you're in jeans and sneakers as when you're dressed to your nines optional shoulder strap further adds to its casual elegance. My Kelly is a size 28 which can fit everything I need during the day and is also on the cusp of what I can style in the evenings. While we all love top handles for their ladylike formality, the truth is that they're not the most user friendly. While the Kelly's optional shoulder strap presents a welcome hands-free solution, top handles can poke awkwardly into you when worn close against the body. While Hermes's signature single straps are extremely beautiful, they're also extremely fiddly which restrict your ability to quickly use this bag on the go. The Stiff Cellier Kelly is a beautiful work of art which at times can appear more like a display piece rather than your go-to functional handbag. Ultimately, the Kelly's long-standing reputation and versatility across nearly the full style spectrum far outweighs its day-to-day -day limitations. Its popularity today may appear to detract from its dignity and exclusivity, but only further intensifies consumer demand for this bag and its market value. It is a steep price to pay, especially if you choose cellier stitching which comes at a premium. However, I do believe the Kelly status as an immortal icon does safeguard your investment, especially if you, like me, purchase tax-free from France, which is the lowest price internationally and guarantees room for future economic growth. With almost a hundred years under its belt and yet it continues to dominate the fashion scene, this holy grail handbag is dynamite in your wardrobe and also your investment portfolio, if you can tolerate some ergonomic shortfalls. You gotta love a bag which is as practical to use as it is stylish to wear, and for me that's a Chanel backpack. This vintage piece is from the 1990s and continues to be the perfect companion today. It's ergonomic to use, packs generously, ridiculously cute on adult proportions, and of course being that signature Chanel black and gold combo is timelessly, effortlessly chic. You may remember from Fashionista Cher in the 1995 movie Clueless that mini backpacks were huge in the 90s and they've been revived in recent years. Despite cyclical trends, we all know that high fashion plus basic streetwear is a formula for success and that contributes to the dual personality of this gorgeous bag. I love that it's hands-free, casual and cute bears all the hallmarks of iconic Chanel glam detailing but with a youthful freedom and flexibility which you don't see in the evening pieces. If you want that classic Chanel aesthetic without looking like just another girl sporting a flat bag, this vintage backpack is incredibly refreshing. The chubbier proportions feel like an off-duty Chanel who's letting her hair down. The elegant formality of the gold hardware and quilted leather take on a young grungy persona through the carefree backpack style. It's so Chanel but just not as you know it. This bag is due for its first major service as the gold has started to wear over time. 
Although I still have a lot of respect for vintage Chanel craftsmanship as few bags can look this good after more than 20 years. My only issue is with the way they've designed the connection between the hardware straps and the bag body. One of the stitches has given way which has resulted in the leather peeling back and at this rate if it continues it can result in an entire shoulder strap detaching. It should be very easy to fix but ideally would have been designed with some extra support from the beginning. You gotta love a bag which can pack more than its appearance, especially when the weight disappears off your shoulders thanks to the even distribution. The exterior pocket is a great way for you to quickly access more essentials and prevents them from swimming inside the main volume. And the compact size ensures that both closures are easily within your reach for quick access on the go. Backpacks are no longer confined to casual attire when there's the magic of Chanel glam. I love how you can transition seamlessly from daytime streetwear to after hour smart casual and this vintage backpack is a refreshing alternative to the flat bags and top handles which you usually see dominating the scene. From in front, the hardware straps appear like Chanel jewelry, so this is a more subtle logo-free way to wear the label if you do prefer discretion. But ultimately, high fashion streetwear isn't compatible with formal evening events, so there are limitations. Buying vintage not only allows you to source unique pieces from fashion history's proudest moments, but also the opportunity for affordable assets to grow into serious investments. Thanks to the fashionable return of mini backpacks, this bag now sells for over 10,000 on the secondhand market, which is impressive considering that I bought it five years ago for 2,200. I purchased it not because I knew it was gonna be the next hot trend, but because I love the design and how it aligned with my own personal style. So I'm glad to say that following my intuition has paid off. A worthy reminder that the iconic Chanel aesthetic and investment growth isn't limited only to the flat bag. So keep an open mind and you may find yourself a vintage gem. So everyone, that brings me to the end of a ridiculously long video. I apologize for the shifting lighting standards as I did have to film over four days. I really hope you enjoyed the detailed review of my entire handbag collection and didn't find it just a senseless, endless ramble. Since I am balancing my baby and my architectural work, I must admit it will be several months before I manage my next YouTube upload, but I will be covering the topic of how to choose the right luxury bag organizer for your handbag, as it can be a very confusing market to navigate. Stay safe in the crazy coronavirus world that we live in. I hope you are all well until I next see you again.